the idea to use the texture of a tile or the image of a tile and scale it up over the whole wall to detail it was actually pretty good. But if we are honest and we take a look at this, the end result is a little bit flat. And can we do this better? And the answer is yes, we can. Look at this. A beautifully three-dimensionally sculpted wall surface. And it's very easy to do. And how to do this, I will show you right now. So here we are. Let's clean up actually our environment first. We will right click and join this. Right click, join this. So we have a nice one big work area. Shift S, cursor to the world origin. Then Shift A or add mesh and plane. We want to make this nice and big. Yeah, maybe 100. Okay, very good. We can rotate this object right here by 90 degrees. Perfect, good. Now we will make sure this is turned on and vertex is turned on. We go to move command, we can move this one up, hold control and then snap to there and release the mouse key. Very good. Go to here or the other way and then we just bring this to here, zoom out a little bit, go to edit mode. We are in point select, select the two points and then we move them up, hold control till it snaps kind of like to the top part of the baseboard. Beautiful. Now we have a model that is kind of like as big as our wall. Press Z key and then material preview. Now we actually see like a quick preview of the textures. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight kind of like sand dunes. Okay, here's a funny trick now. I will press AA so nothing is selected. Then Control R. Control R is for loop cut. And you see when I go to an edge, you have a yellow line. And now I can actually scroll as many times as needed. Again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the lower left corner, you see how many cuts we have. Eight. And I adjust the number with the mouse wheel. Click, right mouse button, click. Here we can adjust those afterwards again. Very good. So then we also maybe have one dip down, one dip up, one dip down. Okay, so control R. And then here we go with three cuts. Left click, right click. Very good. So what are actually these clicks for? Before we continue, click on edge select, hold the alt key and then click on this edge, shift click on this edge, shift click on this edge and shift click on this edge. So you sh should only have selected these outer edges. Then go to here, press or press N and we would like to crease this. Crease means, yeah, well, think about like paper. It's nice and creased, sharp. Okay. Back to this view. Then we'll do the following. Let's actually add a subdivision surface modifier and we set this to two or three. Okay. Back to this view. And you see here we have um, kind of like when this is a piece that comes out, we have a piece that, that goes back. So wherever we have a face, we need to do another cut. So to do this, press A so everything is selected. Right click and then subdivide. And you see now we have a finer mesh and this is actually perfect. This is what we need. So it's a little bit of bean counting, but you will see then it's pretty easy. So we will click on this, click on this. I'm holding the shift and alt key in every second edge here. I am selecting. Cool. Maybe not the bottom one. 
Yeah, that is okay. Okay, so now go to your 3D view and you might ask yourself what this subdivision is for. By the way, in SketchUp, this is a $60 extension if you want to pay that. I rather like to use software that has it built in for free. Then when we drag this one out, look at that. You see how this is very nice and round, but it looks more like a sinus. And this is again where this crease comes in. When we crease this, you see whoop, super sharp. Okay, yeah. So then let's go to point select. Very good. Go to object mode. Very good. And we will do right click shade smooth. Auto smooth so we get nice and sharp edges. Shift D to make a copy and then press X and we move it to the side. So we have a backup. In case what we're going to do is crap, we can go back. Cool. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are moving points and then we will use something that's called a magnetic um, tool. So not only the point we selected moves, but neighbor points too. Back to the future in edit mode. We now take a look at what we have. Okay, so here's a piece up, up, up. Okay. Um, maybe I click simply this point. Then you see up here is an icon called proportional editing. Simply click it. All good. And then when we drag this one up and use the mouse wheel and scroll up and down, you see there's a ring. And the bigger the ring, the bigger the influence. And that basically is what um, this or what can create these wave effects. So the trick then is simply being creative. Push and pull that stuff around. We can also work with various radius. So here, for example, I'm, I'm going counter, pushing this down a little bit more. Okay. Very good. Let's go into object mode. Yeah. Interesting. Here, this piece didn't really work out very good. So we can press Control Z and Control Z till this piece is gone. Okay. Again, Mac and PC, Control Z. Cool. When we go back into um, edit mode, um, another interesting technique is you can select a point and we can also rotate it. And when we use the scroll wheel, we can make this bigger. Look at that. <laughs> it's actually a pretty, pretty fun tool. Now we have even more distortions. There. Okay. You see now why I actually said make yourself a copy because we can very easily generate variations. So here I made a copy. I still have this proportional editing not on. Very good. There we are. Let me go into edit mode. And maybe here now this time I only try out, well, what can I create when actually I just distort things? I don't necessarily move them up and down. What about that? Yeah. Maybe also not too bad, less less um, aggressive. We can still mix moving and rotation too. Well, nothing tells us that we can't do things. Only the our creativity, imagination is the limit. Okay, it's actually not too bad. So this command or process of moving these points. And this is basically what the subdivision surface modifier also does. It creates um, kind of like this point cloud, not point cloud, this low resolution polygon mesh, which then we automatically soften. That's very good. And this proportional editing, however, destroyed a little bit our top and bottom and side edges. So we need to clean this up. And I'm just trying to think which one I'm going to fix. I will use actually this one. I like this one the most. So I will go ahead in edit mode and then I will click, click, 
select with shift and the left mouse button all these bottom uh, these points at the bottom very good so there you see what i have selected then i go to scale and um, see i have to turn this off and i scale them flat a few times perfect i can also alt click on an edge then it selects a whole edge a few times here um, now yeah, this one is maybe okay this one this vertical is definitely not there alt click here zip and zip and zip okay beautiful this is a really nice um detail now the next step is kind of very useful we shift left mouse button click these two points here left and right then we could say shift s cursor to select it this might sound a little bit cryptic in an object mode you see the object center point is there when we rotate in scale this is the center and um now oh oh good i actually went to here you see this is even rotated so alt click here in edit mode one more time a little straightening okay very good then one more time shift s because this might have been changed very good in object mode and then right click and say move the origin to this 3d cursor and you see how it's moved to there and when we now press S, you see how it grows actually to where that object center point is. The main reason why this is actually very useful is now we can bring this over. I will move this up, bring this over, hold control, and go to a side view. Very good. Move this down a little bit there um turn on the scale command maybe i scale this a little bit flatter there okay try to bring it to here so a little bit above the baseboard very nice does this actually cover up this wall which we have behind nearly okay there actually it sticks through just a little bit which could also be an interesting detail to play with this look at this that's actually that's kind of cool to be honest let's try this out i really love happy accidents move this to here there we are okay so what i need to do now is um this piece intersects actually with my console table a little bit so i move this a tick away from the wall good a little bit there very nice and now i will go into edit mode for the wall and floor geometry go into edit mode then face select i mean just select this back face and then i go to mesh separate so this mesh separate is actually when you take a group and you explode it in sketchup so it's all naked pretty much the same but here we can select a particular object or piece and just move it out very good then back to object mode you see now i have my floor i have my my wall because i can now freely move this around you see okay there here this i will move a little bit maybe i go into edit mode and then uh, edge select alt click on this edge move this a tick forward in my case so this is lined up i move around and this is all pretty good very nice yeah that's it now we can go back into the camera view z and render one moment my hard disk is spinning up 
and there it is. Now I can make variations of this and put them always into the same position and see how this actually renders out. Now super fast, let's see how this um, accident worked out where um, we had this plane in there. So shift S cursor to world origin, shift A plane. It still remembers this uh, rotation, 90 and scale, bring this in. There, just move it to there. And let's see how this actually could look. Back to the camera. And there, and like we get really nice, interesting hard edges. Okay, so that's it basically how you can create these rather very organic curved shapes. So it's basically making a flat surface, adding what's called subdivisions or a grid. Then we push and pull the points, deform them, and then via the subdivision surface modifier, we create these nice, beautiful, soft flows. That's it.